Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today we're going to be looking at printing, but printing with a little bit of a difference. Not everybody does this type of printing and I'm not sure why not, because it really is a good way to learn to print your negatives in the darkroom. And what I'm talking about is f-stop printing. Now f-stop printing was not invented by me by any means. It was actually done by this man, Gene Noken, and that's the first time I heard about it reading his book, uh, Photographic Printing. And Gene Noken was a brilliant printer of negatives. Very famous people would send their negatives to Gene Noken and he would print them in his darkroom for these people. Now he used this technique called f-stop printing. It's a very simple technique, but what it enables, the huge advantage of f-stop printing, is that you can use a small piece of paper to learn how to print your negative and get it just the way you want it, with dodging, with burning, and so on. And then you can enlarge that negative to any size you want and reproduce it exactly the same as the original small piece that you were practicing on. Of course, this saves a ton of money on paper because large prints are expensive. So, let's get on and talk a little bit more about what it means to f-stop print. Most of us know what f-stops are, of course. I mean, look, we've got the lens here and that is f-stops. We've got f8 and f11. So they're f-stops, right? Difference of half the light from f8 to f11. But we've also got these f-stops here on the time. So for instance, 125th of a second to 250th is an f-stop and it halves the amount of light that's going into the film. Now, look at this. When we look at these, we can see that they double 60th to 125th to 250 to 500. These times, and it's specifically the times I want you to think about here, are doubling each time we move one f-stop. And this is exactly how it works with our enlarger. Well, with our enlarger, we still have f-stops on the lens. Here we are, look, this is an enlarger lens, and you can recognize each of these is an f-stop. The difference is when we're enlarging, we usually don't use these. We set the lens at a certain uh, aperture. So I personally like to use two stops down from wide open, and I leave it pretty much at that f-stop, f11. Now, if I have a negative that is printing too fast, I will turn it to f16. Um, that means I can double the time that I'm going to use uh, with my print. But normally, I leave mine two stops down from wide open, and that's how it stays. How do I adjust the f-stops for my f-stop printing then? So here I have my timer, and we're in the dark, in the dark room, uh, because it's easier for you to see it that way and I've got it set at 10.0 seconds. Now, if I wanted to half the amount of light that I, would that I would put down onto the paper in the darkroom, I would half this number, right? 10 seconds. I would go down, I'm moving it down now, to five seconds, there. I've halved the time the light will be shining on the paper. I've halved the amount of light and that was one f-stop. I can half it again. So I can go down to two and a half seconds. And that is now half the amount of light again. That's another f-stop. Two f-stops difference from the original 10 seconds. Let's, uh, let's go up an f-stop. So two and a half to five. There we are, five. And if I want to go up another f-stop, I go up to 10, right? There, it's that easy. That is f-stop printing. And in a nutshell, it allows you this marvelous way of controlling your print much more carefully than using any other type of printing method. Now, I'm going to show you me going through a whole workflow of using f-stop printing right now with a negative I've got in the enlarger. But before I do that, I need to explain a little bit more about f-stop exposure times. I talked about 
five seconds to 10 seconds being one f-stop. Of course, 10 seconds to 20 seconds is one f-stop. Each of these is exactly twice the amount of the last one, right? But what if we need parts of an f-stop? Well, this chart shows us those parts. Five, an added a quarter f-stop would be 5.9. If I added another quarter f-stop, it would be 7.1. So five seconds plus a half f-stop is 7.1. If I added another quarter, it would be 8.4. So if I had five seconds and I wanted to uh, push it up by three quarters of an f-stop, it would be 8.4. And so on, it goes up to 10. Look, so that's one, two, three, four. Each is a quarter f-stop more. So 10 seconds plus a quarter f-stop is 11.9. Plus another quarter f-stop is 14.2. So that's how this works. These are all quarter f-stops. And as we go through this tutorial on f-stop printing, I will be using this chart to work out my times for each of the f-stops. Okay, so let's get back to what I was talking about in the darkroom. You'll have seen in a previous video of mine that the first thing I do before printing is make a contact strip of the negatives and here they are here these are the negatives from this particular shoot of a couple of trees that i was doing now the thing is i print them dark you're probably thinking that's way too dark john to get a good idea of the focus of the negative you know was it sharp was it a sharp shot what about the highlights what about the shadows but actually it's just right because what i do is i look at these through the light table if I turn that on, you'll see that it is beautiful. And I can use my loop here to look at these negatives and assess the highlight values and the shadow values because I printed them a little bit darker. So I'm really, it's the highlights that I've, I've brought in to um, a range that I can see. I'm looking at the highlights to see if I've got detail in the highlights. And the light from behind shows me if I've got detail in my shadows. It's a really good way of doing your contact strips. So that's a tip for you. Now, I've chosen this particular one here that I want to print. I like this one. It's sharp. It's great a detail in the highlights and the shadows. So there's lots of information in this shot. Just talking about information for a minute. We talk a lot on this channel about developing and how to get your developing just right. Because remember, we expose for shadows and we develop for highlights. And it's so essential that we get that step right first of all, because that means I have the information in my negative to do whatever I want with. If I push film, I'm losing information in my shadows. So I always shoot film at the correct ISO and then create the image I want in post, what I call post, which is under the enlarger and in the developing trays. That's how I do it. So get the information in the negative and then do what you want with it afterwards. I've chosen this negative. I really like it. It's got everything I need. So let's get over to the enlarger and let's start printing it using f-stop printing. Here's my negative underneath the enlarger. And I'm having a good look at this now to plan my strategy. Because what I use is test strips to, um, as, to actually gauge uh, my exposure. Now, little tip here. You expose for the highlights when you're enlarging. Now remember, in the camera, for the negative, we exposed for the shadows. But in the enlarger, we expose for the highlights. These are the highlights, these dark areas. What we're trying to do is get the correct exposure to get those highlight details that we want. And then we use our grade to get the dark areas right. The grade is for the shadows and the dark areas. The exposure is for the highlights. So looking at this now, this is the area that I really want to get right. I'm very interested in getting this area to have a little bit of a glow 
about it. There's some roots here which are really interesting. Up here is some highlights on the tree. This was a silver birch tree and they kind of reflect the light very well, too well sometimes. And this area here I don't want to be um, burned out or too bright. It will, it will take the eye away from the detail that I want here. So I want to get this bit right and then I'll deal with these bits, these bright areas. I will deal with those with burning. I also want to probably burn down here a little bit and around here a little bit to make sure that there's nothing distracting the eye from this area. The eye will always be attracted to the lighter areas of your photograph. So you want to think about that when you're planning how you're going to print this. So for my test strip, I'm going to actually put my test strip here, first of all, and I'm going to assess this area to see what exposure I need to get this area right. So let's take a look at this test strip I've just done. So what we can see is that I've changed the exposure as I've made the test strip. And whenever you do test strips, cover up. Don't uncover for your test strips. You should always cover up. And for this I used 5 seconds, then 10 seconds, and then 20 seconds. So they were f-stops, right? They were changes by exactly a multiple of 2. 5, 10, 20. So I've got an f-stop test strip. And I'm looking at the 5 seconds. I think we'll all agree that's way too light. I'm looking at the 10 seconds and we're getting there. We're starting to get there, but it's a little bit burned out in the highlights. And we're looking at 20 seconds and 20 seconds is not looking too bad. I, looking at this, will try 20 seconds and let's see with another test strip what 20 seconds looks like for this area. So let me get back to the enlarger and I'll see you in a second. Here's our original test strip, 5, 10, 20 seconds. I tried 20 seconds as a base exposure, so let's have a look at what that looks like. Here's the 20 seconds. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking it's too dark. So that's not going to be any good to me. 20 is too much exposure. I need something between the 10 and the 20, somewhere in between. Now I could go halfway, so let's try halfway between 10 and 20 seconds. Now because exposure is exponential, it's not what you might think, 15 seconds. With f-stop printing, our halfway between is just over 14 seconds, 14.2. So I'm gonna dial 14.2 onto my timer and I'll take another test to see if I can get the base exposure for this area of the print. Let's have a look at that. And it's not looking bad at all. I did another one and I'm, by the way, I'll remind you I'm looking at the highlights. Remember we're exposing our enlarger for the highlights so I'm looking at them carefully and seeing if I like the highlights. I did another one at 11.9 seconds and this one looks nice but it's too light. I think it's a little bit too light so I prefer this one at 14.2 seconds. So our base exposure is 14.2 seconds. Now we need to know what exposure to burn in the brightness at the top of the photograph. So what I'm going to do to help you see that is I'm going to do a print now at the base exposure of 14.2 seconds so we can see the whole print and then we'll see how we're going to modify that using the f-stop printing method. So here is the print at the base exposure of 14.2 seconds. So the whole thing's exposed at 14.2 seconds and it's looking nice. I like this this area here which I want to focus uh, concentrate on but this is too bright. We can see that it's kind of bright. The highlights are sort of burned out 
And I need to balance it better with this. I need to, to bring it down, burn it down to balance it with this area here. Now, looking at the bottom as well, this area here, I want to just bring that down a tad, just darken it a little bit. So I did some more test prints and this one here is for the tree. And as you can see, I darkened it. Now the bottom of that test here, I can do this with, there we go. The bottom is plus half a stop and the top is plus three quarters of a stop. And that looks best to me, plus three quarters of a stop. And I'll, I'll put those numbers up on the screen for you so you can see the amount of seconds I was dialing in for that plus three quarters of a stop. So basically the top of this print needs that plus three quarters. And I also did a little test print of, I'll just pull it out of the water, of the grass. And on the right hand side, it's plus a quarter stop. And on the left hand side, it's plus a half stop. I'll put those numbers up for you. And I don't like the half, it's too dark. So I think the plus a quarter of a stop for the bottom of this area here, plus a quarter. So now I'm going to draw you a print map of how this needs to be printed. And I'll put that up on the screen now. And here's my print map. So here I've drawn onto the uh, base print at 14.2 seconds what I need to do. So I need to add three quarters of a stop to this top area and I need to add one quarter stop to this area here. And in the middle you can see I've written the base time 14.2 seconds. That's important and we'll come to that in a second of why I need to write that down. So that is a map of our print. Now from now on Regardless of what size I enlarge this print to, I can make an exact copy of this print knowing these f-stop additions that I need to add to the base exposure, whatever the base exposure is. So the final part of the jigsaw is what grade do I use? I've worked out my time, my base exposure, my additional exposure top and bottom of the print but I haven't talked about the grade and right at the beginning I said that we use our exposure time for highlights and we use our grade for shadows. So here I did another test strip of the bottom part of the tree. This is the the lowest area, this is where the shadows are and I did on the right hand side two and a half, grade two and a half, and on the left hand side, grade three. I've, the whole thing so far has been grade two. So I wanted it a bit more punchy, a, a, the blacks a little better. So grade two and a half, and then I covered that up and I did my, my base exposure plus a quarter stop at grade three. So that's how I did these. Base exposure plus a quarter stop two and a half, three, and two and a half winds. I like two and a half, it's not too dark. You can still see details in the shadows, but here I think it's getting too um, soot and chalk. So this is what I'm going for, grade two and a half. So I did a complete print. Here's the complete print using the mapping of 14.2 seconds plus three quarters of a stop plus one quarter of a stop. And I did the whole thing at grade two and a half because I like that, I like that grade. And I'm very pleased with this. Now you can see the shadow here, there's detail in that, I like it. It's punchy, it's bright, it's alive to me. I like it a lot. Now we've been doing all of this f-stop printing, but why? It's because I want to enlarge this. I wanted to use a small piece of paper that's relatively cost effective to play around with to get my base exposure, etc, etc. And then I want to enlarge this to 11 by 14. 
So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do an enlargement. I'm going to talk about how we uh, change the base exposure for the bigger print and then of course add our plus three quarters stop and plus a quarter stop. That's why we're using f-stop printing. So let's have a quick look at the calculator to work out our base exposure. So in order to calculate the length of time of exposure that I need to give a larger print to get exactly the same exposure as the smaller print, I use this mathematical calculation here. And what I'm going to do is feed in the numbers into this mathematical calculation. Now, first of all, I measure the negative on the baseboard. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring the length of the negative. If it's too big, you might be able to measure the height of the negative. But um, I like to measure the length because I think it's slightly more accurate. So my old size, the length of the negative on the baseboard was 27 centimeters. Now I jacked up the head of the enlarger to be the right, uh, um, the, the right look on the paper that I was exposing onto um, so that I got it all kind of sorted out and got it just looking just right on the new bigger paper. And then I measured the negative again on the baseboard, not the paper. It has to be the negative length and I got it 44 centimeters. So I, I divide one by the other 44 the new size divided by the old size and I got this number 1.62. Now I square the 1.62 and I get 2.62. So there's the number I'm going to use next 2.62. And now it's simply a case of multiplying the old exposure time by this 2.62 and I get 37 seconds. So when I expose my 10 by 8 piece of paper I had 14.2 seconds and now I've jacked the head of the enlarger up and I'm going to expose this larger piece of paper and I'm getting 37 seconds and that will give me exactly the same amount of light, the same exposure. So before we look at the final enlarged print, we need to just really wrap this whole thing up. I want you to understand what I've done. So you can see here in the chart that 14.2 seconds was my old base exposure. I did my calculations for the new enlargement using the size of the negative on the baseboard and I came up with 37 seconds. Now I'm going to reduce that to take into account my dry down of the final print. So I'm choosing 33.6 seconds from our chart. That's the new base exposure. I'm going to burn in the tops of the trees uh, plus three quarters of a stop and that means that there'll be a 23.6 seconds burn in. If you look at the difference between 33.6 and 56.6, you'll see that's 23.6 seconds burn in. And for the grass at the bottom, it's a burn in of plus 6.4 seconds. Let's look at the final print. And here is the enlargement on an 11 by 14. Let's have a look at this and it's beautiful. I've used exactly the same f-stop printing that we learned in the 8 by 10 inch print and it's come out beautifully. I really like this. It's a lovely punchy bright print. Now interestingly I used a different paper. This is satin finish, whereas the original was gloss. So it doesn't matter. You can change papers. And on Friday, I'm going to be giving you a tip on what to do about that, because there's a little tip that I think you should know about your big papers versus your small papers. But look at that. I love these roots. That's what attracted me to this whole photograph are these beautiful roots. Moving up to the tree, it's balanced. I like the balance better. All in all, I'm very pleased. Thank you for watching. 
Thank you all for buying my book. Thank you all for supporting me with Patreon. Thank you all for watching this YouTube channel because, you know, that's my aim is to pass on my experiences from years and years in the dark room for you guys to help you to give you a leg up. Thanks for watching. See you on Friday.